Hey guys, how you doing? This is the next video I'm going to do. I'm here with my friend and colleague, Cifra Brian Kennedy, um, from Fractal Martial Arts. He teaches Jack and Do, Southeast Asian Martial Arts, Silat, Cali. So, um, yeah, I'm just using this venue tonight and um, I just want to talk a little bit more. We're going to go a little bit more specific into how we use force in Wing Chun. We started off just by, by talking about how important it was to be specific when we're teaching. And we looked at the flexion of a joint, the extension of a joint. We also isolated individual muscles, maybe the anterior deltoid, the biceps, the triceps. And then we also looked at the type of contraction that these muscles are under, whether it's concentric, eccentric, isometric yielding, co-contraction, etc. And then we looked at the different types of energy. And when it comes to Wing Chun, when it comes to physical movement, specifically, we're looking at mechanical energy. Mechanical energy being the sum of kinetic and potential energy, both of which have an inverse relationship to each other. So tonight, we're going a little bit further. We're getting a little bit more specific again. And, what, and Wing Chun is a striking martial art. So we have to have power when we're striking, whether it's with a fist, the elbow, the legs, no matter what it is. So we're looking at force. And specifically what we're looking at is when you make contact with an object, it's called, there's a name for it, it's called impact force. We're going to look at that in a few minutes. But for the moment, when we're looking at force, we're going to refer to Newton's second law of motion. And Newton's second law of motion basically is force is mass multiplied by acceleration. So we're going to look at mass for a moment. Can we increase our mass? I feel we can. One of the things about mass is, the more mass something has, the more stable it is. So therefore, the more stable something is, it's as if you have more mass. You're maximizing your mass. Now, if you look at an example of this when we're doing Wing Chun, as an example, if Brian has a little bit of resistance on my punch, if I don't have stability in my spine, it's as if I have little mass. And when I try to exert force, I only get recoil and I'm being pushed back. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my spine very stable. And at least then, there's a difference. Brian has the resistance. And now, I've just applied stability. By applying stability, it's as if I have more mass. So that's just a little brief note on the idea of stability and mass when it comes to Newton's second law of motion. The next part we're looking at is acceleration. And whenever we flex or extend a joint, one muscle shortens and the other muscle lengthens. The agonist, the agonist muscle shortens and the antagonist lengthens. So for example, when we're doing a Wing Chun punch, our triceps get shorter and our biceps get longer. One of the first sayings in Wing Chun is that we should free ourselves from our own force. A lot of people, they employ muscular co-contraction where the biceps and the triceps are being tensed or the agonist muscle and the antagonist muscle, the antagonistic muscle are being contracted. So in this case, because people are so stiff with their biceps, they don't have good control. The biceps are very tense and it takes them too long to lengthen. And this means there isn't as much acceleration. It's very slow and laborious. If instead, when we bring our fist into position, we're employing isometric yielding in the biceps, we're just using a very minimum amount of force to get our hand into position. And because we just have a small amount of force, it means it's very easy for the biceps to lengthen. So that's just a little thing that can help when it comes to acceleration. The last thing is to have a good degree of impact force. The greater the rate of deceleration, the more impact force that you're going to have. So we quickly want to decelerate. Sometimes I use, I use the expression that the target brings my hand to a natural stop. Because what a lot of people will do is they will stop their own hand. They will slow down before impact. And this means the rate of deceleration is very slow and there's not much force. A lot of people, when they make contact, after contact, they keep trying to push through for an extra second. They get re recoil and it's a bit of a push and it's, again, it's laborious. We don't have that impact force. However, if we go from rapid acceleration to rapid deceleration, this gives us the most impact force and we have the more, most power. 
And as an example of this, I'll just go a little bit gentle. If I keep pushing for an extra second, again, that's what it is. It's a type of a push. And I've got a bit of recoil and it's not so good. If we compare this to rapid deceleration, it doesn't push the person back so much, but there's more internal trauma. So again, that's looking at force in Wing Chun through Newton's second law of motion. Mass multiplied by acceleration. However, one thing about this law is that it assumes that force is being generated from inertia. It's from inertia. What if we were generating force, not from inertia, but from stored force, from stored energy? And this is what we're going to look at in the next video, because we've previously looked at elastic potential energy, energy which is stored in our body. That's for the next day. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, Brian.